Welcome everyone. We're here for another session of Productivity Power Hour. And today, so I know that in the past I've done sort of like Q and A's and that sort of stuff. But one of the things I'm trying to, as I'm like trying to stabilize is figure out how to get, once again, to get that content production workflow going, because I've seen some feedback from the recording and stuff that sometimes the recordings are a little long, which was one of the reasons I was attempting to chunk it out between different things. But while chunking out requires a bit of time when it comes to like editing and like making sure that things are chunked out correctly. And that's been a little bit tricky. So in the meantime, I figured let's go back to some of the working sessions. That way we can at least get some of the stuff up again, back to that sort of ideology of something is better than nothing. So with that said, so today I wanted to go ahead and let's dive back into obsidian things because it's been a little while since I've looked at as far as like what's changed and you know, it's one of those things where like honestly, going through docs can do a lot as far as like helping you re-understand some things that you might not have known beforehand. So we can go ahead and do that. And I thought at the same time, something that I've been playing around with a bit is basically creating an Obsidian course of my own. So I thought it'd be fun to sort of go through, let's sort of work through that, see what's been going on. And then that way, yeah, we can sort of simultaneously brainstorm at the same time. So with that, let's go ahead and kick it off, shall we? All right, let's jump in, shall we? All right, so here we go. We're gonna do a couple of things here. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and bump up the docs here on this side. And of course, we're talking about Obsidian. So how can we not have Obsidian also here side by side as well? So I'll bump this up a bit, and then let's go ahead and hide the sidebar so that it's easier. And let's make some notes as far as that goes. So we have that, all right. Let's kick it off. So for those that don't know, there is an official Obsidian Docs uh, site for sort of teaching how all the various things happen. There are certainly things that could be improved and as far as workflow. And so one of the reasons we're talking about a course as well, because I think there are different ways we can teach all the great things that make Obsidian what it is. But in the meantime, let's go and see what's been officially documented to see what I've been missing. And I already know there's some new stuff in here that I haven't really been leveraging. So this is a good chance to sort of reset and then sort of get a, get a sense of how I might want to create my own Obsidian course. I see Chalming here in the chat. Obsidian Docs needs a dark mode. Yeah, a dark. I think for something like this, for me, I do like dark mode for reading. I know for some people it doesn't. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and yeah, let's explore. Okay, so two things actually I realize I'm going to need. So I'm going to call this my Obsidian course. This is going to be the other note. So this is what kind of type this is. It's going to be that's all actually status. It's really in ideation right now. So I'm just going to leave it in an idea. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. So first thing first, uh, when going to the docs, so I noticed that everything on the left-hand side is organized via alphabetical order, which again, I think understandably like, easy to do programmatically, but it would be nice if it was more um, sort of like a guided step of like, here are the essential things. So I know we've brainstormed this in the past a little bit, but I think when it comes to, let's see, let's do a course outline of how this might look. So I think first thing first is we would have an essential section. So maybe actually, maybe introduction first. So in my mind, when we introduce a first thing you probably want to do is, you know, basically like you're talking about like your, what is Obsidian, how to download, getting set up. That's like your basic top three things. Download installation. There we go. That's what introduction would be. I would sort of expect at the top. Next, the essentials. These are sort of going to be some of the key techniques that we sort of talk about. And so it's interesting The getting started kind of like a little bit has a little bit out of order, right? You would think that. Well, actually, I've realized it's not out of order, out of anything malicious. It's simply because, uh, once again, it's alphabetical. So given that, that means that, so the download makes sense. But then your first thing when you're uh, doing your essentials is creating a vault, definitely creating a first note. So let's just, let's just go ahead and walk through real quick to see if the docs, actually, I'm going to bump this out a little bit too. Can I hide this? Oh, this is now, okay, never mind. Let's see. Okay, yep. I already know this. Open existing folder. Yep. An existing vault. That's actually two separate things. So da -da -da -da, now we now we have that. Let's find nothing new there. Didn't miss anything. Creating a new note. Okay, this is yep, that's fine. I already see this new block here. That's already kind of new. We're gonna find out what that is in a little bit. Formatting notes, markdown, yep. Okay, so this is gonna be like I think an addendum. So it would be like crash course on markdown. Because I think it's, again, I know a lot of us are familiar with it, but it would be nice if we actually, well, if we could uh, basically give someone a 
crash course on the high level things you're probably going to want to use within Obsidian. And so maybe it's even Obsidian Markdown for all I know, but let me put this as a question mark as something that might happen. All right, creating your first notes, piece of cake, that's fine. Linking notes, linking notes is very important. But uh, let's see, so we know already the double bracket syntax, that's fine. Is there anything else that I need to know? Non-existing note, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to specify this section. Navigating between notes, that's... Okay, this is... Navigating between notes is different from linking notes, in my opinion. Okay, yep, so we know, we know all this already, great. Okay, so this is, I would say, these are more like, I'll just call it advanced for now, but syncing notes is, I wouldn't call it an essential. Not everyone needs that. Sometimes they just literally want an ability to write notes. So that's not, that's like further on. How to update Obsidian, that's, eh, I don't, I don't think that's an essential. Okay, all right, here we go. Let's see, customization. Yeah, advances, yeah, customizing your Obsidian is totally an advanced thing, that's not an essential thing. Okay, let's do the how-to, because this is the part where I want to see what new essential features have made it into the docs that we haven't seen. And again, I already know there are some new ones, so otherwise this, would, this effort wouldn't be as interesting. So aliases are pretty important. Honestly, I consider that an essential part to learning how to use Obsidian, because that's one of the big things that I've seen now using a lot of different software is it's funny how often you find yourself in a position where you're using something and you're like, oh, I want to do this thing. And then you're trying to search for like the specific terminology that software uses for doing that specific thing. So a great example of this is for me, at least when I'm video editing, one of the things I want to be able to do is I want to be able to cut the video and then remove the time so that like the, the clips they like splice together. And the funny thing is that is kind of, it's called different things in different software, making it kind of tricky to locate what it is. And then once you locate it, then you have to like recommit it to memory that that's what it's called. And so to me, it's fine to have like a standard set of terminology for any software, but then giving users the ability to then alias things to what makes the most sense to them. I think that is a huge part of what makes, at least to me, Obsidian useful. And I would love to see this, honestly, as a pattern. I don't need this to be an Obsidian exclusive thing, but it's one of the things that I've come to really miss and really want out of the software that I use these days. So obviously there are different ways of setting aliases. We already know, we know this one. So if you didn't know, you can, so there's a couple ways to actually do the aliases. So here we can see like, so let's call this like Obsidian Course 101. That's like one way you can do an alias. So Obsidian Course 101. But the one I generally prefer just because it's a little bit easier to like read is just having it like this in a multiple line. So whoops, that's the wrong thing. Obsidian Course 101. Yep, so that's the same thing. So it would be nice if they, yeah, okay, cool. They're considering more ways to do it, but I, they should document that there's more than one way to do that. That's not totally accurate. Linking with aliases, that's fine. Defining aliases, that's fine. Unlinked mentions. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, nothing new. Custom styles. Oh, we're not going to worry about that. That's a thing. Basic note taking. Sure. Preview. We're not going to worry about that. Capture information. Do clipper extension. Clip entire web. Oh, this, this I haven't played around with before. So apparently there is a way to clip entire web pages and downloading them into your vault. Apparently death AU, oh, actually I forget. I think death AU does. Hey, radio signal. Good to see you. It's been a little while. Let's see. Markdown web clipper. Okay. Let's test this out real quick. Adding it to Chrome mark download. Okay, great. So let's pin this real quick so we can see it. And so if I'm on something like Smashing Magazine, actually, I don't even need to do that. What if I'm like, actually, no, uh, it's fine. What about here? If I click this, hey, okay, then I can download it. Oh, I don't know if I love that because that means that then I need to like go down and grab the finder file and then drop it into Obsidian. Nope, don't love that workflow. But what I could do is copy uh command a include front back template Ooh, hey that's cool oh i like this a lot oh snap it includes the page info the excerpt and then it adds all the links and it gives me front matter hey i can get on board with this so then it's like if i'm like oh like how to capture information in obsidian Boom. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
I can definitely get behind this. Okay, so this is a highlight. So let's go ahead and let me go ahead and because I'm going to call this out now. So cool, let's see, capturing information with markdown extension. This is a big win. So that will be that. And then definitely recommending these, this markdown extension for sure. All right, that's a win. Boom, highlights. All right, already got one thing that's useful and we're... PR a copy to clipboard setting. Tell, tell me here. That's a good question, actually. Let's go ahead and take a look. As a developer, I am curious about this. So let's see. Uh, the one thing I would want to do then is do like mark download, mark down web clipper. Yep. There you go. Death AU. Yep. There is a actual. Actually, you know what? Then instead of the Chrome extension, this is better. Yeah, it would be nice to have the copy automatically be in here, wouldn't it? Because I already have that checked. This is cool, it like copies everything. Yeah, you would just want a copy button down here. So if anyone, uh, actually, let's curious, imagine if someone copy button won't install. Nope, no one's done that yet. Oh, someone actually has an Obsidian integration. I split out Obsidian into its own issue. I have a basic working Obsidian branch based on the Clipper by Jay Plutal. Clipping articles via UI has serious limitations, which is not too bad. Oh, long articles. Obsidian plugin, interesting. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, let's do that. So let me drop, I'll just drop this one here in the, ch oh, there you go. Chelmings beat me to it. So, uh, okay, so the reason I like this, because we see that inside of the GitHub issue that there is some issue with the current clipper for Obsidian, I think with length of article. So I actually do like the manual control here that's actually being mentioned. Do, 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 do. So that's cool. But actually, for the sake of checking real quick, this is the Obsidian integration. Here is the clipper. The clipper works by... Oh, clip a selection onto a web page in Obsidian. I could see how that would be useful. I think for now, I do like Mark Download. It's very clean from like a Markdown perspective. And I like the fact that it gives you even the front matter piece, which is actually, in my opinion, fairly big deal. So, uh, you know, here to how to capture information in Obsidian, right? If I copy all this stuff, whoops, this is what I want. I mean, this is great. I mean, I could then enter, I guess, in my own front matter real quick and then just drop that in here like this. Yep, I can get that, last modified. I do like, you know what, I'm debate. I'm like playing around with this. I think I like the source at the top. I know you, I usually have in like the back matter, but this is pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, anyways, this is pretty cool. All right, so we've now learned how to copy that. Let's see, chumming here, there are two shortcuts, Alt-Shift-C, copy current tab and mark down as clipboard, or Alt-Shift-L, Copy current tab URL as markdown link to the code. Okay, let's try this. So I'm gonna delete all of this. So you're saying that if I do Alt Shift C, oh, that's not it. Maybe I'm on Mac, so maybe you meant option. Sorry, it probably went option. Okay. Okay, that, I think, I, oh wait, actually, you know what? No, the way I can check that, let's go to change settings. Uh, so I'm doing option Shift C, and then, yep, that did it, that copied everything. And then copy current tab as markdown. And then you said all option shift L copy, copy current tab URL as markdown link. So if I do this, oh, okay, that makes sense. So copy content. So yeah, so option shift, so link would be a markdown like this. Oh, that, I don't think that worked. Well, let me try that again. Option shift L. I don't think that worked. Let me try something else. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, so for whatever reason, it looks like the L part is not working for me, but that is okay. Typically, I'm probably not copying the link directly. User guide, so let's see. Oh, this contrast is not great. Download tab as markdown, download selection as markdown. Oh, wait, hovering over markdown option. Okay, so if I hover over it, Right click. Oh, download all tabs as markdown, download tab as markdown, copy tab URL as markdown link. That didn't work. Okay. 
That did not work. I don't know why this is. That's, that's a little buggy. Okay, not a big deal. You can double check shortcuts, ArcNECA. I use Obsidian Hypothesis plugin to synchronize highlights and annotations. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, okay, hold up. So, ArcNECA here, Obsidian Hypothesis plugin. Oh, okay, I'm learning about a new tool right now. So, apparently, there's a tool for Hypothesis, allows you to annotate. Also, mad props to the team who grabbed the domain hypothesis.is. That's great. <laughs> great use of the IS extension. This is pretty cool. So, I mean, in action, I annotate. Okay, well, clearly, we, this is something that is worth checking out. So, let me go ahead and drop... See, let me drop this hypothesis plugin in the chat for anyone who's looking for like an automatic way to sync annotations from hypothesis. So this was mentioned again. Like, so I think for me at this point, I haven't done as much annotation. So I think that's something I want to look into at some point. Uh, so our neck synchronize highlights with hypothesis. Great. Perfect. Cool, thank you for the input and thoughts on this. This is great. Definitely be checking out more of that. All right, so settings, 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 settings. Let's go back to the course. Do, do, do. Yes, learning how to configure. Mm. I don't know. Settings is definitely something that has to sit in there. All right, anyways, create notes, note first approach, link first approach. Oh, interesting, they're referring them as methodologies. So I guess that could be like ideologies, but honestly, I'm not sure I want people. Well, anyways, we'll think about that. Embed files, we know how to embed, that's fine. I don't know if, no, that is kind of like pretty important because people want to drop in stuff. Extep stuff, iframe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about iframes, developer notes, resizing images. Oh, this is important, how to work with images. That's something that a lot of people don't know about. That's good. Folding, yes, that is something you could turn on. So that is one of those settings that should be considered. If people like that stuff. Format notes, yes. Okay, headers, we know that one. We know about emphasis, we know bold, we know list. Images, resizing, links, that's fine. URI links, da, 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 da. Okay, this is advanced, I would say. Obsidian URI links. This is useful because there are times where you probably want to reference your Obsidian note from a different app. So in the case like, because one of the examples we've talked a lot, a lot, or we've talked a lot about on the stream is the idea of like task management. But again, task management within Obsidian has its limitations just because again, it's everything's via plain text. And so a lot of the ergonomics you come to expect out of your task manager, especially when you start to get, when you start to scale your task management, that become, that's when it gets tricky. And so if you want to just link to a note inside of your task management, apparently you can link to the, um, yeah, it looks like URI links. So the question is, I'm actually curious is, can I copy the URI link? How would I do that? Link to note, link to note. I mean, this is good, but Obsidian URI, yep, to Mac. Running the app one should be sufficient. Encoding. Oh, this is actually fairly complicated. It's not something that just works apparently. Interesting. Okay, there's like a whole thing on your eye links here that I'm not sure I'm ready to dive into. Okay, well, that's good to know. Importing data. Okay, this is great. Yeah, importing is such a tricky thing. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Internal link, da -da -da -da, link to headings. Yes, linking is a big deal. You have headings, you have blocks, you have pages, basically. All right. Do, 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 do. What is a transclude? To embed or transclude blocks. That's like an interesting word. I don't know what that is. Inoperability, not worrying about that. Manage attachments, sure, not worried about that either. 
read edit mode, don't worry about that. Renaming notes, yep, that's fine. That is technically an essential though. It's important for people to know that you can switch between things. Updating Obsidian, yes, I already know that. All right, this is the one. <laughs> if you did not know, this is the one I've been waiting to play around with and haven't looked into. Obsidian added callouts to its, well, to its UI. So uh, let me drop this in because this is actually worth highlighting. Okay. So in terms of, let's see. So apparently they used to be called admonitions. That was the first time I'd ever heard of it that way. So here we go. Basically you can see it has like a header. It looks pretty, it looks nice. And so it looks like it's inspired largely from the quote syntax. So like, this is my quote, but rather than just having the quote block, you're actually able to then do things like this. Oh, that is nice. Okay, yes. Callout blocks is great. Okay, and then inside of here, you can basically do your normal stuff. Link to, sure, I'll link to myself. Yeah, and it just works as expected. Oh, I like the callout box. This is nice. Do, 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 do. Holy smokes, there are a lot of different types to the callout box. Okay, so to me, you know, honestly though, I don't know if callout bots are technically essential. They're more like types of blocks. I don't know. I don't know how I would say that. Let's see, so dude men here in the chat. Hello, hello. You can do toggle callouts and links in the header. What? How do I, how do I do that? My info? Oh. Okay, so it takes the an argument as some sort of markdown block. So can I like bold this? I can, although I clearly need to update my theme to accept this kind of stuff. But okay, so that's good that you can actually add heading. The grouping on the list of types of color is grouped by color and icon. Okay, so in that case, we can do like note, huh? Note is that, okay. So now I'm just gonna have to try stuff. Note abstract. Okay, so looks like they have different icons associated with them, which you mentioned, group by color and icon. But the color though, an uncategorized will default to note unless they are customized. What? Oh dear, this is huge. Like I, I thought it was just like, oh, you get callouts, but this is now a collapsible bit. Oh, <laughs> this is pretty great. Foldable callouts, this is really, really awesome. Cause now, oh, my notes are gonna look so much better. I mean, the only thing that's like a little bit odd about the editing experience I will say is that because everything is in like the, the, the quote, here a little bit odd but okay here's the thing though here we go data call out call out color where the color is okay so something that i'd probably need to do at some point actually you know what let's just start i have like a like a theme obsidian theme demo file yes this is what it is all right so as you can see what it basically what this is is the ability to show what your theme looks like with the various things. Oh wait, Dudeman has a, a recommendation here. Holy smokes. Try two from the same line on the list. I mean, oh, two from the same line. Okay, got it. So let me go back. Let's go down here. He said, try two of the same ones. So abstract, you're talking about like summary? No, that's not what I wanted. Let me, let me, let me delete the argument. Abstract summary. I don't think that's what you meant. Comma summary? Nope. Oh, maybe try two from the same line. Dude, if you could give me a little bit more clarification, I'm kind of curious what you mean by that. In the meantime, though, what I do, two separate callouts. Oh, 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 got it. Okay. So you're saying if I do here and then I do it once more? Like that? Mm, two separate callouts. Try two from the same line on the list. 
Oh. Huh. It embeds on itself. I'm trying to see how that would be useful though. Abstract my parent topic. Nope. No, to compare them. How would that be compared? Maybe I'm missing something. This is my content. So I see that it's embedded within an embed. Oh, okay, hold up. So I'm clearly nesting stuff. Okay, so nesting callouts is a thing. So uh, probably not something I would have discovered on my own. Did they say anything about nesting? They say nothing about nesting. All right. You can nest callouts. But you're talking about comparing them. What do you mean by try to from the same line on the list? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now I understand the request. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. So this is going to be, okay. So when I think what Dudeman is saying here is let's say warning, caution, attention. What does those three look like? So what we're going to do here is we're going to do, let's do warning. And then let's delete that and let's not even worry about the folding right now. There's warning. Then there's caution, which is actually what I'm expecting. And then attention. Okay. So I think that's what you meant just to like separate that and see the difference. So it looks like mainly it's the fact that like the way I'm seeing the multiple version is like ultimately some sort like it's a it's an alias because i do agree like the the icon for this can sometimes mean warning sometimes it does mean caution sometimes it means attention and so having giving users the like the consistent ux pattern for that is super nice so in that regard i think that's great and so then again if it's attention and then i'm like don't or attention watch out for the latest email. Okay, so it looks like, again, so I would ultimately say that's basically an alias. And this way, yeah, you pass in the first line, which will go ahead and update the heading, which is nice. And then once again, we can add the foldable. So, so you can nest callouts. Foldable types are essentially aliases. For a type of callout. But then now, watch for the latest email. You know, here is where you can sign up for the newsletter. For example, there we go. We can expand it. This looks pretty good. I will say, I think my CSS is the CSS is slightly off on this. But okay, great. So, hey, Kata Boy, how's it going? College is an interesting topic. Yes, it totally is. And honestly, I would want to devote like a full video to like introducing it, talking about the different types, and then more importantly, figuring out how to best use it. Because, you know, in my mind, there are like, there are basic warnings you'll put in the document or as you're typing. But what I think is particularly interesting is how, especially the fact that it's foldable and you can put headings in there, means that it kind of opens up a whole new way of like, like displaying information in your notes, which I'm actually really excited by because some things I've always found that like were kind of weird, like just like displayed constantly. So if you have like a person page, right? So let's call like, I don't know, let's see. So let's say we have a, um, I am blanking. So let's go ahead and say, you know, let's say Dino and then Dino it's Dino Fuente, let's go Dino Fuente. So especially with things like on this page where you have like things about, so let's say like I wanted to write down the birthday is let's say like, you know, June 6, you know, has two brothers, you know, lives in Wisconsin or, you know, Fuente, let's say, yeah, let's try, let's try, lives in Wisconsin. This is the kind of stuff that like useful to me, but I'm not sure I actually want this constantly floating about. So I'm actually thinking like it would be kind of neat actually to be to do like this. And then to drop in, oh, yep. I think this is, oh, I think I'm gonna reorganize a lot of my, my templates are gonna get updated up the wazoo. Look at that, that's so pretty. And then on top of that, first of all, I like that. Then if I collapse it like this, it's always hidden by default. And then I can, oh, this is gonna make so, things so much easier when it comes to pro, like things you like, because 
obvious, like if, if it's not obvious, you know, one of the things that I do a lot on the stream is I'm opening notes and because the stream is it's public and stuff, it's sometimes like I'm a little hesitant to open certain notes because I can't remember if something's private. But if I store what I clearly know to be more or less like personal information that I don't necessarily want to be automatically displayed unless I go ahead and manually click on it, this is great. This is a great solution. Oh, that's, that's cool. Okay, so it clearly automatically hides it. I wonder though with the auto hide whether you can actually have it auto foldable. No, in a foldable call, the contents are hidden until it is expanded. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, th this line threw me off a little bit, but here it is. It's the plus button. So that way, if you don't have it, you can, or that's what, to be honest, it's really funny. Again, um, I love that over time when you get experience in the industry, you start to do similar things. So I like the fact that because once I saw the minus immediately, I was like, oh, if that's the default hidden, plus should be the equivalent of having it auto expand. And sure enough, that's what that does while still giving you the toggleable feature, which, oh, this is great. Oh, I'm definitely going to use callouts. Okay, great. Yeah. So Kata Boy here in the chat is talking about the admonitions plugin, which is basically the original callout that was being implemented in Obsidian. So it looks like they're going to be working. Oh, improving the core feature with their plugin. Actually, you know what, let's go ahead and do, give a call out because the admonition plugin is what kind of gave way to this. So is this it? Obsidian admonition. This looks right. It's starred a lot. So let's see. So do, 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 do. Failure bug, example, usage, place code block. So that I did like the code block style. And you can, we can see here that that's kind of the way they were working with callouts at the time. So that was uh, pretty nice. I would say custom titles rendered in markdown. Yeah. But at the same time, I do see why the why the the core team on Obsidian did use the sort of like the embedded like the quote the call up the quote box the quote syntax with this symbol. I can see that. Uh, so it's interesting. So seeing sort of different API designs for how you might represent what's being rendered to the user versus what we see here, like sort of represent it as plain text. So. I'm glad that the admonition team will continue working with the team on that because I think there's a lot to learn from one another. And again, the more we can make Obsidian useful for people, I think that's that's just great. So, oh, callouts are a big, big, big deal. Can configure default open close. All right, so I said we talked about callouts. We'll worry about whether or not that is, I think I may have to reduce this, but anyways, customizations. Okay, so this is, oh, right. This is what we were doing. <laughs> I need to open the Obsidian demo file because inside of here, I have the ability to basically demo what, so this is, I think this file, I think I shared it on the Ben code or pub, is it publish dot obsidian dot com slash Ben code Zen. I don't think that's it. Nope. That's not it. How did I find out my publish URL again? I had it published. Do 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 do. Core 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 plugins. Publish. Oh, publish your notes through. Yeah, sure. Do. Is publish not showing up now. Let's see publish changes. Do 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 do. Publish to Ben Codezen. Here we go. Oh, I was close. It was that MD. Zetocastin Obsidian theme demo file. Yep, here we go. So I have this thing here. So for any theme developers, like if you're looking to, I'm not the one who created this. Uh, it's like a, a lot of people have had different flavors of this. So this is just having to be what mine, I just, if you copy the markdown for that, that'll do. So since we're talking about callouts, I wanted to add a section in here for callouts, links, obsidian, links, 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 inline code, code blocks, task lists, tables, Great. Okay. I'm actually going to do callouts here. Okay. So let's take a look at the callouts. So do, 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 do. Yep. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice color, but I just want to see all the different ones at this point. And I'm going to worry about it. So here are tips. Let's see. We have tips. And then we're just going to copy the heck out of this thing. 
Actually, you know what? No, no, no. We're going to do something else. We're going to do something even better. One that I don't know how to do actually obsidian just yet, but we have all of these things here. And so what I'm going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and assume, yep, we're just going to grab all of these. So if there's more than one, basically, is what I want to grab. Go to the end. There you go. Then we have all of these. Split this up. Just bang that out like that and that. There you go. That should give us all of our examples right here. So if we come in here and drop, oh, that's not going to work. So hold up, split, enter, split up. Great. Now this should, ah, yeah, yeah, that should work as expected. Oh, that did not work. What did I do wrong? Oh, that's what I did wrong. Silly me. All right, so let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Multi cursor select all the way down, switch that in. Now, oh, I wonder if it has to be all caps. We're about to find out. I don't think so. I would guess they did not make the API that. Ooh, there we go. Excellent. Okay. So this is cool. We see that we have warning, question, success, tip, info, abstract, note, uh, all with varying gradients of colors, which is nice. Bug with the deeper red, failure orange example. You know, honestly, I wouldn't change any of this. This is super nice super super cool so i'm just going to go ahead and publish this change so that wait blish changes and then change what change yeah sure sure okay publish done ba -ba -ba -bum. great all right so i'm really happy honestly to see that the They've thought, really thought this through. I really love the callouts here. Very, very pretty. And whatever colors they chose also happens to work really well in the Night Owl theme that I'm using. So super excited about that. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay. So we have that. Great. Folding. We talked about that. Customizations. Great. This is, this is awesome. Hotkeys. We know about this, but it is pretty critical. I would say, I'm going to say it's an essential right now, but not everyone does hotkeys. So this is kind of a mixed bag. This might not actually be true. Backlinks. Oh, we already know about this. Multiple cursors. Okay. Alt, you can multiple cursors. So this is good. Okay. So it looks like I could do what I wanted to before, theoretically, where inside of my callouts, let's test this out real quick. So if I did it like this, I can theoretically click alt like this. Okay. The problem with this though, is you're probably noticing is that if I make a mistake, I can't undo my mistake. And now I have a bunch of cursors oddly. So I don't love that because the workflow, as you saw with the VS code, I have the basic keyboard shortcuts to let you do that. So that earlier, once again, it was like, you basically choose all of these, right? And you just go like, oh, here's what I'm gonna, like, these are my selectors. And then I can do like command shift L, which splits it, but then I can just move it back and then shift it all the way to the right. So I don't, that would have been trickier to do. Dude, man, here, I didn't know Obsidian had multi-culture. I wonder if it works with the Vim plugin. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I need the multi-cursor to be more precise because I think a lot of us, when working with things like Obsidian, we know the value of understanding keyboard shortcuts and that kind of thing. So having to use a mouse to manually click each one with the option, not my favorite workflow. This is a lot of room for error in my opinion, especially with something like this that we were trying to modify. So yeah, this is something that's interesting. All right. That's all good. Working with multiple notes. Okay. This is about split panes. Uh, yep. Link panes for previewing paints me rearranged with dragging. Yeah. Panes is a fairly important part of like seeing things side by side. That is certainly a thing to do, do, do. That is something worth covering. Okay. Multiple vaults. This is interesting. Is there something I don't know about multiple vaults? You can open a vault. Ba -bum -bum -bum. Can a single, can you have multiple vaults opened or are they different? Internal links are not shared across vaults. So if you have one vault inside another vault, this can get confusing. So we recommend not doing that. Yeah, that's, I mean, this is, we'll call this an advancing. Multiple vaults is kind of a tricky thing. Transferring settings between vaults. Sure. Maybe that's like a thing worth mentioning. Cool. Arneka here in the chat. Like, it looks like the multiculture does work with the Vim settings. 
Oh yeah, tags. Tags are huge. It is it is definitely a philosophical debate on how to best use them within Obsidian. Again, for, in case anyone's new or haven't um, heard my thoughts on it, I use tagging basically for like classification, but that's it. Uh, otherwise, I find that in like links generally work better over time because they scale better. So unless you need it to be a very like you know for a fact it's like type note, and so that's what I do. If like from a programming perspective, think of them as uh, static types. That's the way I think of it because you can't alias tags. That's the thing. And that's what I think is one of its biggest limitations is that like tags sound really good up front. And then when you start to like break them out, you're like, oh, wait, but this tag kind of belongs in like these multiple places. That's where it gets tricky uh, because you can see here we have tags. Um, tags are also like, oh, it's interesting. They don't talk about parent tags. Oh, nested tags. Oh, I think that deserves like a whole category in and of itself because parent tags in this is kind of a tricky thing. So dashes are good, underscores are good, Pascal's good, camel case is good. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are these identical? Oh, fascinating. You can't even, you can't use just numbers. I wonder why. Okay, but actually I'm, now I'm kind of curious. So if I'm like two words, that's that. Two words, two words. No, what if I did? What if I did lowercase? Ah, stop autocorrecting me. I don't want to autocorrect. Stop. Okay, there we go. Two. Okay, so when you do the dash, it's a different one. So that's that's slightly misleading then because they are two words, but the symbol will completely change its reference point. So now you have two words with like a simple string. So it looks like the capitalization is irrelevant. It's more of a visual differentiation. However, the moment we use dashes and underscores, that completely changes the tag itself. And so see, this is exactly what I'm talking about though. This is an issue with tags because over time you're going to end, or I think at scale, when you're using tags, you're going to be like, you're going to accidentally add an S or you're going to be like, oh wait, but this does like maybe it's better this way and at that point to me that is a link because then that's when you want aliases and more importantly you're probably going to end up expanding on this con concept uh, pretty significantly so yeah i really got to clean up my tags uh they're, they're they're they've gotten a little out of hand but okay let's see okay cool so we did most of the big how to's at this point although what's interesting though is that the how to's don't talk about something that i thought would have been in here which is searching. Where is the search? Oh, it's a plugin. Oh gosh. Okay. Yes. So let's take a look at plugins real quick, shall we? Cause plugins is a whole thing. So you know what? We did the how to section and we're doing the uh, plugin section. Let's call it like docs intro. Okay. Let's see if we learn anything different. So we can, we can record audio recorder details. Microphone configured in the ribbon, start recording, and then it'll automatically embed the audio format into the active note. That's nice. I could see how that's useful. So like if you're in class and you're just recording for me, I'm pretty big on external tools for recording audio, like Descript and that kind of stuff for transcription. So this is interesting to note, but not as curious about that right now. So again, once again, plugins are going to be a big that we're going to have to talk about, I think in the course, there's no question about that. So backlinks as a, wait, why is this a plugin? Link to unlink collapse, show more contact, view backlinks. Okay, whatever. Command palette. Yes. That's a thing. Core plugins. Oof. There's so much in here. Okay, okay, let's not get overwhelmed. Do, 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 do. Let's keep going. Daily notes, again, file explorer, file recovery. That's good to know. Nothing too interesting there. Graph view. Yup. Oh, actually, anything about graph. Highlight connections. Click to open a note. Right click to context. Yeah, that makes sense. Filters, groups. Yep, you can group by certain things and color them. Forces, repel, start time lapse, animation. Yeah, I knew all that already. Do, 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 do. Okay, slides. You know what? I haven't played around with those slides. I have not played around a lot with that. This is something that I... Okay, so let's go... Actually, you know what? Interesting. 
let's look at the my obsidian course so if we were to generate slides for this how would this work so use new lines and this so it might be like introduction obsidian is cool then that then what is obsidian take awesome notes in markdown okay now then do i just say present oof okay my obsidian course so it, it did all the front matter okay so it looks like the slides needs to be i mean that's pretty cool we maybe do h2 and then what if we did the block here and let's say uh tip call out blocks are cool you can even embed markdown in it okay let's go into the publish so once again this is fine so what i'm learning here with the slides is that you really can't afford to it's important for you not to have anything else on the page it literally should just be slides hey okay so that kind of worked yes yeah like that worked basically you see the embed that called out that's good probably would want to figure out some of the styles for that but anyways demo start presentation okay click this button after opening the note i mean start presentation yeah that's what i did okay so slides are cool. I do like the slides plugin. It's it's nice for basically, I think, impromptu, but I think Cassidy has done a really good job utilizing that before. Though I really need, I think I need to update the styles a bit for the slides. They look kind of big on my end. Although, you know, I realized part of it is probably because I'm zoomed in. Okay, star notes. I actually don't use star notes very much, which is kind of interesting. And there's no command for star notes, which I think may be part of the reason, but apparently we can star notes. How do we do that? Do, 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 do. Nope. Eh? You can type in the command palette. Okay. Yeah. So let's say I want to star my obsidian course star. I don't see star. They must've gotten rid of it. Cause I do remember having it at some point. Explain search term. More context. I think they got rid of it. Oh boy. Fascinating. Okay. Well, anyhow. Okay, no more star. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know why. It's because it's probably not turned on. Editor status slash commands in editor by typing in forward slash. How are these not synced already? I thought I had the stuff already open. Shoo. Wow, apparently I have not used some of this stuff. Okay, great. Yep, so the start is here. Yeah, I was right. Here we go. So basically, star, show start pane. Okay, there we go. Star, unstar current file. So I say star file. There we go. Now it's linked here. Okay, so it's nice. So basically, like a low level bookmarking, which can be very useful. Very good. Can we un. Oh, you can, you can star a search. Huh, remove. Okay, starring's pretty neat. Tag panes, templates. Yeah, templates is a whole thing, jeez. But not technically essential to using it. Dates, word count. Okay, the only other thing here, I mean, there's the whole UI that you could explore, but oof. yeah, this course would be fairly massive. It probably needs to be split up too into like uh, essentials getting started and then templates, configuration boilerplate yeah there's <laughs> there's a bit that we go into this to, i think to make it like a smooth experience for people because one of the things that's clear even from my as someone who very very knowledgeable of obsidian and love all the work that's being done in here there's a lot going on so how this is chunked so that people don't get overwhelmed that is would be i think in my mind the goal of having the Obsidian course is to be able to do things like that, to be able to provide a more uh, or smoother transition for users going through the Obsidian onboarding process. So, all right, those are the big things I think I wanted to go over. I guess we'll do a quick check though, as far as see Eleanor Connick, and then we're gonna look at her Obsidian newsletter because it's been a little while since I looked at the roundup. It's been pretty busy. All right, so this is immediately catching my eye. So do 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 do. 
All right, where I saw something up oh, here we go. This here apparently is a notion like table. So it allows you to interface found with Okay, so it's on MVP. Oh, it's already navigate. Huh? Text number tag. Oh, let's you tag it. Okay. Wait. All right, we're switching. We're trying this out. This sounds pretty interesting as a notion user. I want to be able to have stuff like this. So let's go ahead and do let's take a look at the obsidian notion like table. So if we go into plugins search. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Notion like oh nope. Oh. All right, so I think it wants me to install it manually. Making a table with a command, yup, 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 errors built with React, TypeScript, Obsidian API, fine. Development in Obsidian, run dev, make directory. Wait, <laughs> oh, this is involved. Okay, so it's I guess it's clearly not inside of the library just yet, so. I'm a little surprised by that. I kind of want me, I kind of want to see this in action, but it's requiring some cloning and stuff, which, yeah, again, I don't want to do development. I literally just want to use it. So hopefully they can add this to the library. I think I do want, before I really recommend or play around with it, I do kind of want to see it in production. You probably need the Bart plugin. Oh, tell me more, Bart. I don't see this Bart plugin you mentioned. What is the Bart plugin? Oh, Excaladraw. Oh, this is one I've been thinking about too. Yeah, this is one that's gotten a lot of looks. Views, Outliner. Do, 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 do. Compatible with Zoom. Minimal theme settings, day planner. So many cool things that people have been coming out with, which is really nice. Place your own selection, quick add. Do, do, do. Emoji toolbar. Neat. Yeah, you know what though? Um, maybe that's what we'll do actually. Um, since the Notion like table isn't totally ready, I'm actually gonna go ahead and open, install the Excaladraw plugin because that's what I'm kind of, or really curious about. So basically you can store and edit Excaladraw files in your vault, embed drawings in documents. So this is good because this is like the, one of the big things about it is like, well, if you can't, how, do, how does that work? So, oh my gosh, there's a whole video series on it. I'm not going to make you watch it with me, but I think we're just going to go ahead and let's just go, let's just play around. So Excaladraw plugin, I did install it, didn't I? Excaladraw. Turn it on. Okay, much more than a drawing school. Here's a showcase. Okay, I will watch your videos later. In the meantime, apparently, copy markdown link from selected element to clipboard. Huh, yeah, for now I'm gonna remove you because that's I'm using that for something else. Okay, let's see what happens now. So we're inside of here. We've been testing out stuff. So let's go ahead and continue that in here, delete that. All right. Oh, it works with the what? In a new pane, in a new pane, export center in the current active pane. Yes, okay. Huh? Okay, great. So I'd be like A, A then connects with this concept, huh? Oh, the arrows move too. <laughs> this is great. Okay, and then, oh, this is huge. And I say this because I've been thinking about diagramming and that kind of stuff. And I have, well, I've been figuring out what I want to do with it. And I think this, this is basically my answer. The question though is actually, you know what, to be fair, hold on, let's not get too excited just yet. We're talking about design patterns here. Here, go back. Utility actions, export actions, insert actions. 
Okay, clearly uh, there's things I gotta learn, but that's fine. So then what if I close this? Oh, that's not what I thought would happen. So we're on PPH9. Do, 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 do. What happened to my mermaid? What happened to my Excaladraw? Excaladraw? Drawing from this. Uh-huh. Do I like embed it? Is that what I do? So I go like drawing Excaladraw like this. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So now if I update this and say there's like a decision point, use up, oh, up, oh, that's not what I wanted. User is logged in. Can I change like the text size? Is it more limited? I kind of want to like make it smaller. It's fine. I can I can deal because this is already a heaps better than here. Reset canvas. Expand. Nope, not what I wanted. How do I get out of this? Close. Oh, hmm. But I did change it. Tell me more. Yeah, user is logged in. I mean, do I need to like connect stuff? That's connected. Right, and then this from here to here, right? Okay, so can I force save to update transclusions in just well, I wonder why it's called transclusions. Okay, there we go. So I needed to manually update Excaladraw, but that's fine. Then it updated all the embeds accordingly. But this is a pretty big deal. I really want to figure out how that would work with the... So clearly what I have to do is install this, make sure that, and check this out on the Apple Pencil because that's, that's what I'm curious too, is that if I'm on my tablet, how could I use the Apple Pencil? Yeah, I think the transclusion it essentially means embed, but it's such a, such a heavy word for embed. <laughs> transclusion. Like, I feel like... I don't even know what I feel like. It just... Oh, it's so, so weighty to call it a transclusion. But it does look like it's a manual thing. So I guess that makes sense, right? Because if you go in here and you mess something up, this is my new text. You know, we can just like throw that around. So it looks like it's here, but and it's here for like saving purposes and like playing around with. But I mean, this is fairly intuitive. I'm like holding space bar, dragging around, zooming it in, or maybe option zoom in. Okay, option scroll zoom in, that worked. So then here, eraser, redo, undo. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to watch the whole video series because I want to, I mean, woof, this is this is a whole thing in and of itself. So then again, you'll see that here. Oh, it looks like the save did not. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It did not update the embed. So now I can force save it. Now this shows up. Yep. Okay. I'm okay with that. That seems like it makes sense. New drawing, auto import SVG. Uh, looks like Excaladraw is very much going to be. I wonder if it updates if you reload Obsidian. Hey, that's a good question. Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna say do, 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 do. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume no. This is this is my update. Okay. Close. Oh, did that just automatically add stuff? Circle. Close. Wait, why is it automatically updating now? PPH9. Yep. Please open up in a new tab for me. Thank you very much. I realized you're just that, that. Close. Ah, that's a difference. Okay, so once you close it, it automatically updates everything, which actually, yes, does make sense as well. What's interesting though is can I start undoing stuff? No, I cannot. Once I've closed something and I've edited, so like here, if I do this, I can undo it. That's fine. Oh, hey, look at all this stuff. You can do width, you can do stroke style. You make it a little bit cleaner. If you don't want the sketchiness, you make it really sketchy, make it very clean. Ooh, edges, rounded. Hey, I, you know what? This is my Callouts and Excaladraw might be the two huge discoveries from this working session because as I'm working on concepts and ideas, 
it would be really helpful uh, because so mermaid js so if you're in the chat jacob mentioned is the idea that we could kind of do things like this as well so if i go ahead and actually let me open my mermaid note because i always kind of forget oop wait charts flow chart here we go so so we can see here mermaid js lets you sort of embed a a well-defined flow chart where you know where like Christmas goes to get money, which then goes to go shopping. Then you have to think about it. Then you have to go, you know, one, two, three. It's like it automatically lays it out and it's very beautiful. However, the reason I think Mermaid is incredibly powerful is because well, when you look at the syntax of Mermaid, you'll notice it requires you to know exactly what points to what and kind of like what order you want it to. So it's a really nice output when things are formalized, but on the same time, when you're thinking about concepts and you're still like brainstorming mermaid makes a heck of a lot oh, sorry not mermaid excaladrol makes a heck of a lot more sense because you're still expanding on concepts and working on it so similarly if we're like still in here trying to define like okay like what do we want to do like maybe we'll talk about you know thanksgiving here and so like this is thanksgiving and then oh here we go there is an edit so here you go you can do uh so you can make this font size large you can make it small uh, you can even change the font family what Oh, this is, I mean, I, I kind of like the sketchiness, I like the sketchy text. This is cool. So if I expand it over here and then kind of do A for arrow. Oh, they already have some keyboard shortcuts embedded into this. Oh, snap. Now, if I close this, that did not update. I don't know why it's so <laughs> inconsistent with it. But okay, uh, oh, it's fine. A little, little buggy here, it seems, with the when it updates, when it doesn't. So this is great because then I can just keep building on a concept that's not quite yet solidified. Does it let you do the plugins as well in Excaladraw? What do you mean the plugins? What plugins are you talking about? Apparently we can import images into here because, you know, as if that wasn't cool enough. I don't know what this library is, but that sounds cool. Oh, Excaladraw library. <gasps> can we get like wireframe stuff? Oh no, I mean by, oh no, I mean, oh yes. <laughs> because can I, oh my God, they have stick figures in here to get out. Okay, hold up, let me just, let me try this. Add to Excaladraw. Wait, did that work? Okay, I mean, there must be some sort of syncing thing, clearly. I, how do I, how do I do this? Ah, uh, okay, yes, okay. So I, I inadvertently just stumbled upon what Jacob was referring to. This is awesome. Hold up, I want my stick figures. Add to Excaladraw. Do I need to like log in with Excaladraw? This doesn't make sense. Follow the instructions if you want to add your own library onto the list. No, 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 no. That's not what I want to do. Browse libraries. Oh, low. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so this would be where's my stick figures? Give me my stick figures. Download. Great. Then load the stick figures, which is probably in desktop, I believe. Excaladra. Wait, what is it called? Stick figure. So S. Stick figure Excaladra lib. Oh, yes. Amazing. Yes. So now we have our stick figures inside of here. Oh, this is phenomenal. I mean, this is this is just because now it just means that you can like. I mean, we talk about Obsidian. One of the things I love about Obsidian is templating. And so basically in order to automate your workflow. And so I wonder now, uh, I, again, because, hey, I, I, I build software. And sometimes when I'm brainstorming, I need placeholder stuff. And looks like we have some basic elements, although it's making me think UI. System design components, IT logos. Hey, Vue is in here. Angular, nice. I'm gonna assume React is in there. Yep, there's React. Cloud. You know what? I'm a little surprised that there isn't like a component for wireframing. Like that's what I would have called it. So, oh wait, 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 wait. This is this looks promising. Maybe I just call it wireframe like this. Wireframing placeholders. Let's download this real quick. Because this is definitely, oh, can I delete stuff? Okay, anyways. Wireframe, is that what it's called? No, lo-fi, that's what it's called. Lo-fi wireframe, here we go. Okay, so then I can add like a phone here. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I, do they have like elements in here I can use? 
badges, tags. Okay, I can deal. I probably want to eventually figure out how to work with Excalibur Draw to create other elements. But this is exciting because then it's just more of that like sell. I just, oh, this is so exciting. Ha, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. I think, you know what? Let's end on a high note. We clearly have unlocked something really big. And so it's funny, Jacob was mentioning this. Excalibur has also been in my periphery as well. As like something that could be cool to like, you know, have drawings and stuff. But like this just, I mean, this fills a huge gap for me from Obsidian because at one point I was like, oh, I need to do research on like my iPad. I got like regarding what kind of thing I'm going to do for like drawing things. And then like, how do I import that into Obsidian? My next quest will be try to figure out how to get this to work on the tablet because that's probably what I'm going to be carrying with me the most. And if I can, especially with Dudeman's comment there, and I imagine people want this, if I can just get it to work with Apple Pencils somehow, and that, like that'll, it's just, oh man, I'm just, I'm just so happy. Anyways, all right, high, high point. Let's go back to the camera. Okay. So with that, we've done quite a bit in this session. We've gone over like sort of re-review the docs to see kind of how things are laid out, outline what a possible course might look like if I were to ever make one. And then on top of that, we got to discover how callouts work, which is a really, I think a really big enhancement to how we can display content within Obsidian because plain text has been great up to this point. And we've had a sense of like collapsible accordions and things. But particularly with this way of callouts and the way you can style it, add headers, add visual icons to indicate like what you intend. Yeah, that, that's a pretty darn big win. And then finally, of course, we were stumbling, trying out, looking over new things. And Excaladraw came up sort of organically when we we're looking at some of the top plugins in Obsidian. And we got to play around with it. And honestly, it is really intuitive for again for having for me i would say i have some experience with wireframing tools but i really haven't used excala draw that much really really well done as far as it's the way they've embedded it into uh, obsidian so this is absolutely ah what a delight so with that said i think that is a wrap for today i'll catch you all later hope you all have a wonderful weekend and i'll talk to you all next week Bye bye